In this video, we are going to see some cool automation ideas, some killer automation ideas in Python using small codes. And we'll also be dealing with some amazing libraries in Python. So let's get started and uh, let's create a folder saying in the development saying automation. So we'll be creating a folder named automation. So let's open this folder and let's get started. So in that folder, I'll just create a new file first file saying that uh, I want to find what my horoscope says for today. So let's say I want to get my horoscope. So I just have this file horoscope.py and for to begin with in the horoscope, I have a very cool and important library for horoscope that say that's like that library is pi as show so that library is p y a z t r o pi as show so if you don't have this library installed there will be an error so to remove that error you will have to do pip3 install and then p y a z t r o i already have this installed so it will tell me that yeah you have already installed this uh, library I, okay i just made a mistake it's py astro so it will tell me that um, it has already installed it so i don't have to install this again now to begin with i will have to put in requests so i'll import requests i'll import requests then I'll start with a function. So in to, to begin a function in Python, I say def and that is initializing a function and then what my function I can call anything. So I just call it horoscope. And uh, I am not accepting any parameters as such. So what will my horoscope take? So pi astro, it takes a sign and it takes days in the parameters. So I want my sign so i'll have the sign parameter or the variable created and i'll have this taken from the user so let's say i am asking the user for the sign so please enter the sign like that uh, sunshine or something sign and the other thing i want is day so for what day do you want a horoscope for so that's uh, today tomorrow or day after or yesterday for example yeah, yesterday and now creating the parameters uh, params uh, tuple so i just create the param tuple as params is equals to and this tuple will have so you can change this tuple so this tuple will have uh, two things that is one is sign so the sign will be sign and the other parameter it will have is day so whatever variables you have created that those two and then it's closed the tuple is closed now now i want to create the url so what for what url this uh, uh, what url i have to pass so this url is uh, it's https actually https and then aztro so this this is the api actually and it's a, it's a very cool api by i guess samir kumar so and then dot website so you can go to this website also and check the documentation available there it's a very cool thing you can use these this api is uh, just this this code is just the beginning of using the horoscope uh, api you can use this horoscope api in other in your applications also you can use the api to develop mobile applications as well so n number of uses for this uh, small api so it's it's uh, it's vast it's vast and now I just create a response using the API. So I just have request.post and there I post the URL and for the parameters I pass the params. Now I want to convert this into a JSON. So I want the JSON output of it. So I just have JSON created out of the response. And now what do I do is I just print the response. So I just print the response using this print response. Okay, now everything is done. I just have to call the function now so i have completed the code and i just call the function like horoscope and i have no parameters so that's it that's my code so when you run this basically what will happen is it will ask me for the sign so just enter in lower cases it uh, just enter the sign and then i want it for today 
So as soon as you enter this, it will give a proper output saying that, okay, that's the date range for this for this sunshine, Libra, that is from September 23rd to October 22nd. Okay, my birthday is on 21st October. Current date is today's date, May 23rd, 2022. Description, it says that, uh, okay so that's that's the horoscope and it's saying me that like it'll give me some compatibility okay whom am i compatible with what is my mood okay i'm quite relaxed right now and uh, uh, i am relaxed but guys i just need uh, your support uh, please please go ahead and subscribe to my channel the subscribe button will be there somewhere down please subscribe to my channel for and support me for this amazing uh, freshly brewed content i just keep on browsing and reading and documenting to give something or the other which is new to you guys okay and also interesting for you guys so please 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 support my channel so that's the first program that's the first automation what we have done here right now now let's uh, let's start with the another program so that's the first one horoscope now let's create another file here saying i want to convert i want to convert one currency to another okay for example i was staying in dubai for some time or uh, i'm staying in us for some time and i want to convert that us into an inr i have to just uh, do a transaction to a friend or someone and i need to pay okay so i need some transaction and i want it quick and i wanted the updated one the latest conversion rate i want the rate for from usd to inr so how do I do that? Okay, so I just create a file named currency dot py and here what I have to do is from so there's a library there. there's a very cool library for this so from its currency converter with rate now again if you don't have this so I will import currency from here I'll import the currency from here but if you don't have this you will again have to go and you'll have to uh, install this pip3 install and then paste this here currency converter with rate that's the library if you enter i already have it so it will tell me that you're already satisfied that condition is already done so i don't need that okay so we have already imported it so this is this is a very cool program this is a very small program as such now what do we do is we create an object out of it so we have currency is equals to currency dot and then we have capital currency mind you we have too many currencies so you can you can write your conversion as well so if, if you do if the variable is too confusing you can also have your uh, conversion so it's like you can converter or something yeah so that that would be that would be easy so converter equals what currency from here dot and then there is a method currency with the capital c and then nothing you just have to have the data so what data you want is uh, whatever currencies you wanted so uh, basically we'll start with the hard coded one and then we'll convert we'll take the input from the user so we'll do that in that format so now i have the object created that's the converter dot and then i have the uh, method convert now what do you want to convert first so i will have to convert first is the base so what is the base what base currency do you want so i wanted usd to ina right so i want i'll just input usd sorry usd and uh, what is my target currency so i'll have to write target and the target is inr inr and then how much amount like so what amount for what amount do you want so i want it for one one dollar how much is one dollar how much how much rupees is one dollar so amount is equals to one and then in the end cap so that's the method i have it and then just what do is i print the data i print the data so as i print the data i have the base currency set to usd and i have the target currency set to inr so when i run this i get directly i get the output that from usd to inr converted amount is 77.60 that's the uh, latest value that's the latest uh, 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 conversion rate for a uh, USD to an INR. So basically, this was uh, this was the uh, static program. So this was like a program where you had fixed values. So if I want to take the input from the user, what do I do is I can write here base is equals to and take the input from the user. So that would be a string, obviously. So you just take that. Uh, what would be the enter base currency? okay so that would be the accepting the base currency from the user and then you will have the target so 
you will have the target so enter the target currency enter target currency that's it so what do you do now here is you don't need these you need the variables as such so base and I don't think so this would work like let's see target and uh, yeah that's it so let the input come from the user here now so let's just rerun this program now so when I rerun this program it is asking me for the base currency and I don't yeah that's USD and then INR okay that's the same thing yeah so perfect it accepted here the base from this base variable and the target from the target variable and that's it so you can do it for anything I, I, if I want to convert one AD to uh, so let's say the base currency is AD and the target currency is INR so let's see what's the conversion rate for okay it's 21.128 so I'm staying in Dubai and if I pay one dirham to one any friend of mine so I'll get 21.12 okay that's the conversion rate for AD so yeah so that was our second program that was our second automation a quick and a cool library for getting the currency conversion rate okay so that's the third one now let's start with the third one no that was the second one let's start with the third one so here uh, what I'm doing is I'm converting whatever my text is to speech so what, I, what I'll do is I'll just type a simple sentence hello guys and welcome to learn apply and build and learn, learn apply build and then I'll save that, uh, that it will be converted into an audio file that will be saved somewhere in my program or in my project in my project folder and then what will happen is if you just go ahead and play that it will be played okay so that will be an mp3 generator so what I do is here is I create the program for text to speech so that will be text to speech text to speech dot py now so from let's say we are importing pi game from pi game I import uh, mixer so that's a very cool library I import mixer okay and uh, from I want this library this is again a very cool library GTTS that is Google text to speech I import again G and then TTS that will be a caps all caps now what okay uh, not that gtts capital s now what i do is i create a function that is def main so i create a function there now and for the function or inside the function what i do is i create a variable that is a text to speech whatever the text to speech is, is equals to and what i want the text to be so i want that text or else like no, not tts uh, that will be too confusing so what I do is I create this text so what is the text I have to pass that to the module that is GTTS so as I said it is hello friends hello guys and then I say welcome to learn apply build Le welcome to learn apply build and I say please subscribe to my channel thank you guys thank you in advance for subscribing okay now that's that's the variable i want to save it so what do i do i do is i save it in some output like okay so that gtts will convert that into a audio and now what i do is i use that variable text and then dot save and how do i save it i save it here somewhere in this uh, folder only so I'll just copy the path here of this and then what do I want to save it in I want to save it not in the currency.py in the same folder I want to save it in an output dot mp3 so that format will be an mp3 format whatever the audio is being saved now I'm using the other one the pi game um, the library from like the Pygame library and I imported the mixer from there so I just have I use that now so I just first start mixer dot in it as a start mixer dot in it and uh, that that will that will initialize it that will initialize it now what I first I want to load that music whatever is created right so I just uh, have mixer dot load mixer dot load and so that load will what will take what will it take is it will take the 
a path for the output dot this thing so i just pass the path again so the uh, output dot mp3 is path here so i just copy and i'll paste the path here so that's the path and now i want to play this right so now i can just write mixer dot music and then i have to use the play method that's it and now we had the main function so i just uh, uh, call that so i can have if name is equals to main and then i just run the main function okay so that's it and now my output file will be created okay i can just label it as learn apply build as well but no that will okay i'll just label it as lab lab and here also i'll label it as lab so that will be pretty cool yeah lab it's a short form or it's an abbreviation for learn apply build okay so let's run it let's run it and see what we get so do we get an, a lab output here okay so it says that pygame dot mixer has no attribute load okay okay it's music dot load not directly load it's music dot load because that's a mp3 file and then music dot load okay so let's just uh, delete this mp3 which was created first and let's rerun the program now so when we rerun it yeah it's saved here and if we go and reveal that in finder anywhere and uh, if we go and if we go ahead and uh, play it hello guys welcome to learn apply build please subscribe to my channel okay that's amazing please guys please go ahead and subscribe to my channel okay it won't take anything you just have to go and click a button there so please guys go ahead and subscribe to my channel so that was text to speech okay that was amazing by pygame and gtts that is google text to speech okay now the fourth one the fourth one uh, is uh, it's it's a very cool thing it's like again i'll be linking that again to learn apply build okay so if i give you any image and if i want that image to be attached to with a watermark so if i want to attach a watermark to my image so i just label it watermark.py and if I want to attach a watermark to my PY, so I have I have some I have some uh, libraries which I've already written somewhere. I've already imported them. So let's just import the uh, images library. So PIL, okay, that's Python image library actually. And then I create a function saying that uh, it's it's saying like watermark image, okay. So I'll just write watermark and then watermark image. And then I'll pass the uh, parameters. It is expect it is expecting three parameters: image path, resolution, uh, or the result path actually. And uh, it's taking what text you want to pass and where do you want to pass? Where do you want the watermark to be present actually? So I'll write have the image variable as uh, image dot. So that will be the image path here. Now accepted the parameter or the argument. Then I'll have the watermark where I want to draw the watermark. That is image dot image dot draw image dot dot again the draw method and where do i want to draw it i want to draw it on the image so i just pass the image there now so now what do i pass is the column where so the way where on what column or where i have to the position of the watermark so that's i can give it anything like that so i just paste i just place it as like uh, 9 comma 3 comma 10 that's it and then what text do you want to pass okay so then i'll write w mark watermark dot text and then i'll have the position comma text so then i'll have position comma text and then again comma i'll fill that with the fill is equals to i'll have the color so that's the color col color actually not the column or that's the color and then i'll what i'll do is i'll just show the image image dot show once I have shown the image, I'll save the image in that same folder, image dot save, and then that will be actually the uh, re result path. Okay, now what I do is I just pass the image. I just pass the image here. Uh, that will be uh, I'll be saving that image result dot path here. And one second, I'll just uh, copy some image here. I'll have this. Let's say let's say we have the lab logo and uh, we copy that or we paste that in the development section where we have 
where we have the automation here so here I am just writing the learn apply build again so I want learn apply build to be written above so if we have the image here if you have the image here so what I'll do is <clears throat> I'll first open that image so I'll pass pass the image here or else the path of the image so I'll write image is equals to and then what the image name is so the image name I have kept it as 3 dot jpeg J -P -E -G. so that's the extension okay and now we just uh, run the watermark dot so I'll just have this copy and paste it from the other side okay so watermark image I'm just calling it and that is the image I have passed here the image path the result dot jpg I'll, I'll have the result here pasted and what do I want to write I want to write learn apply view okay so I just I just give it a try I just run this Okay, so when I run it, if you see, I have a very minute amount of uh, learn, apply, and build written. Actually, this is a blacked out screen. So if you can see here, there is learn, apply, and build written here. So uh, let's just let's just take some another image. Yeah, I don't think so. This image is working fine. Let's just take some another image, and uh, I'll just copy and paste that image here. So let's say we have this image and we paste it here. Okay, so we'll use that image now. Okay, so in the project folder we have now one dot chip one dot jpg. So I'll just use that. Okay, so let's say that we have passed the image and again we want a result dot jpg jpeg. And uh, let's say what we'll do is uh, we'll pass the paths here. It is as we don't get the path and that is why there is some issue occurring here so instead of this I'll pass the whole path of the image okay that's it and for the result as well I'll just pass the whole path and remove this one dot jpeg let the result be pasted here as well so now let's just give it a try let's just give it a run yeah we can see clearly no errors and then we have non apply and build okay that's a very beautiful photo of Guru Dutt yeah a big fan i'm a big big worshipper of lord Dutt. yeah whatever whatever is happening whatever is there it's because of it's because of him so yes that's the watermark that's the watermark library it's not pretty that much interesting but yeah it's it's pretty cool it's pretty cool now uh, what we can do is uh, we can have one more uh, like one more thing one more uh, program which is which is like uh, to check like if if I have a file if I have one or two files and I want to check like uh, plagiarism in the file so I just create a new file saying that uh, plagiarism G I A R I S M dot P Y okay so for for that I'll, what i'll do is like now again this is this is very cool thing it will compare two files and it will show me how much percentage of these two files are matching okay so it's pretty amazing actually so the library which is there is diff lib and from there i'll just import sequence matcher import sequence matcher um, yeah you have a sequence a C Q U E Q U E N C E sequence and yeah here we have it sequence matcher and we create a function where it accepts two uh, two things like uh, two files actually. So we create a function here. I'm just pasting it here. Now what will the function have is it will open both the files. Okay. So it will open one file without any errors. It will ignore all the errors. So I've already already mentioned it here. I've already written it. So with open F1 errors is ignored and as file one and uh, it will ignore the file two as well it will open the file two as f2 now what do what do we want is we all want all the data so if i write here f1 underscore data is equals to f1 dot read yeah that's the method i want so i'll read that whole file and for f2 underscore data again same thing i would read that now i want to create a function or sorry i want to create a variable where i'll match the sequence from the data of f1 and f2 and i'll find a ratio of that so it's it's already there in the sequence matcher so what i'll do is result is equals to i'll have sequence matcher and then first thing is i'll have first none comma and then i have f1 data comma f2 data and then i have to find the ratio of that 
so i calculate the ratio of how much there is a matching uh, from both the, the from both the these things so for the ratio i'll have to multiply that and print the result so for printing the result i'll just write print and then i'll use this uh, format and these i just have these files r and then the variable which we had the rest variable which we had so it is r res and then multiplied by 100 so we want it in percentage that's why and then we have to print the percentage symbol as well percentage similar so if you just pass this and then now what, what we have is we have to pass the paths for f1 and f2 so it's why f1 is equals to and then input and then uh, we can just say a uh, path for file one and uh, okay we just have colon space okay that looks amazing actually it looks clean not amazing it looks clean and f2 again and now this call the function so my function is well uh, whatever the algorithm checker and then what am i passing is f1 the path for f1 comma f2 that's it so that's the that's the file so what do we need here is we need uh, actually we need two files here or two we can just pass two codes actually we can just pass two codes also and uh, try to check like whatever the uh, condition is okay yeah so we have path for okay i'll just I'll just close this and i'll just rerun it so path for file one i'll just copy this path for the code what we can do is we can just uh, attach same file and check is it 100 percent yes it says these files are 100 percent similar because the, the sequence matcher it's uh, it, it's getting the data it's reading it and then it's matching it right so mm, it's pretty pretty amazing now if you file if you uh, uh, attach the paths for two different files if you uh, attach the paths for two different files so one one was this whatever watermark was there and the other one was the other code so we just copy and paste this path so so we have some import statements right in both of them so that is why it says that it's 3.299 percent similar right so yeah so that's that's the uh algorithm checker or how much similarity is there between both the files uh, it shows that and uh, so those were the five programs the fifth one for uh, checking any libraries or a quick automation task or a quick automation uh, program using Python so uh, that's the that's the program or that's the uh, code uh, thank you so much guys and please 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 subscribe to my channel for this freshly brewed freshly uh, amazing libraries which I'm coming up with or which I'm continuously uh, exploring for you guys to bring something new and these all things or this you uh, this you can be you can be learning and you can be showcasing these skills or else using this horoscope library somewhere in your project so it would be pretty amazing you can just see this code and just write and you can get started with it actually so thank you guys thank you please subscribe to my channel and sub support my channel thank you so much